Hi, this is Miss Ray, and I'm going to continue reading Angela's Eyes by Walter Dean Myers from the collection of stories, 145th Street. We left off on page 44 in the middle, so I will back up a little. She dreams about a place to eat, Mr. Rodriguez said finally, and twisted his face into a silly grin. That's a good sign for a young girl, isn't it? Angela took the eggs and pack package of sausage sausages and paid for them. Jorge Cruz played idly with the cards as Mr. Rodriguez bagged Angela's purchases. When Angela had left, Mr. Rodriguez slapped the flat of his hand hard against the countertop. Why do you have to do this? Mr. Rodriguez lifted his voice, a thing that was rare with him. Why can't you leave the little leave the girl alone? We have bad girls in this neighborhood. And you don't say a thing to them. This is a good girl. So why don't you leave her alone? Lips speak lies. But the face speaks the heart, Mrs. Flores said, shaking a finger towards Mr. Rodriguez. Jorge, did, did you see Mr. Rodriguez's face when the girl said that she dreamt of Eddie? Who is this Eddie, Mr. Rodriguez asked. You know, the black man who works in the little diner that the Greeks used to have, Jorge Cruz, Cruz asked. Yep. I see him at the market. You won't be seeing him at the market much longer, Mrs. Flores said. I don't believe a word of it, Mr. Rodriguez said. You're making something of nothing. What do you think, Jorge? Mrs. Flores asked. She has her father's eyes, no? I don't know, Jorge Cruz said. Maybe she has a special vision. What vision, Mrs. Rodriguez threw up, Mr. Rodriguez threw up his hands. This Eddie is still alive, isn't he? If he dies, it's you two who put the mouth on him, not her. Eddie Robinson was born in Athens, Georgia, on the same day that Franklin Delano Roosevelt was first inaugurated. Eddie's father would have named him Franklin if he hadn't promised his cousin when the boy's mother was first pregnant that he would name the first child after him. So Eddie, it was, and not Franklin Robinson, who was the hit of the hit by a truck on Thanksgiving morning. Someone who saw it said that he had pulled up his co coat collar and was leaning into the bitterly cold wind and never saw the truck coming. Others said that it didn't matter, that all that mattered was that Angela had dreamt of him and that he was dead. Surprisingly, it was Tite Sanchez and not Mrs. Flores who started the most trouble for Angela, this despite the fact that it was Mrs. Flores who spread it around the neighborhood that Angela had dreamt of Eddie Robinson. When Eddie died, it was the same Mrs. Flores who went on with her. Did you hear and her I told you so's? But when Mr. Rodriguez gave a party for his friends, the best customers on and best customers on the Wednesday before Christmas, which he had been doing for the 10 years he had been in the business, it was T.T. Sanchez who piled the biggest burden into Angela. Perhaps it was the wine or the heat from the kerosene burner used to supplement the cranky radiator, or perhaps an unlucky combination of the two. T.T. was standing in against the wall beneath the plastic Malta Fresca sign when she found herself looking into someone's eyes. That someone 
sitting with her mother's sitting at her mother's side at the round table was Angela Luce Colon. Don't look at me, Titi screamed at her. Angela looked quickly away, shocked by Titi's sudden outburst, then compelled to see what kind of creature would scream at her so she looked again, searching in her eyes for reasons for this violation of her sensibilities. Don't look at me, Titi screamed again and buried her head in her hands. All eyes turned away from Titi towards Angela, but as the girl looked back, the heads turned away quickly. What's wrong? What's wrong? Angela's mother's voice was like the screeching of a gull. Her eyes darted first to her daughter, then to those around her. What it what what is wrong? Titi has had too much celebration, Mr. Rodriguez separated himself from the two old friends. Here, open another bottle of wine and let's relax and enjoy ourselves. The party went on, but the musical lilt of voices, the symbol lightness of laughter, did not. Angela's name pulsed beneath the hushed conversations like a muted drum. When T.T. was finally calm by Sadie Jones and her cousin, she apologized to Mr. Rodriguez um, through her tears. I'm sorry, she said. I don't want to die. Mr. Rodriguez didn't answer her, just patted her lightly on the shoulder and told her, Okay, mommy. When T.T. left, the others began to leave too. Soon, it was just Mr. Rodriguez, Jorge Cruz, Angela, and her mother who remained behind in the gaily decorated bodega. I hear what they say. Angela's mother had her arm around her daughter. It's a terrible thing to say. This is America, not some jungle. Why do they say things like that? Today they talk about Angela. Tomorrow they'll be talking about me, Mr. Rodriguez said. Half the people in this neighborhood don't have jobs. All they have all they have for entertainment is what they can make up. But they did not stop talking about Angela. When Titi went around saying that she did not want Angela looking at her because then she might dream of her, it brought a knotted agreement, if not an amen and a hastily made sign of the cross. There were images in Angela's mind. When her father died, she had lived with the terror of knowing that he had been killed in his taxi and that they had found him slumped over the wheel, just as she had feared for so many nights ever since he had started driving. When it had come, she was asleep. Her mother woke her to give her the news and then left to go to the hospital. She had lain in the darkness of her room, her mind blank, her body numb. Had she fallen asleep? She must have. When she was sure of her surroundings, she recalled an image of her father. Had it been real? Or was it perhaps only the echo of a thousand headlines that had already screamed their violence into the deepest corners of her soul? Later, she had leaned against the cracked porcelain sink, the tea already cold in her thin hands. Her mother and aunt returned from the hospital, their tear-streaked faces bringing her the news that the images had indeed been real. The people began to shun her. That people began, began to shun her was the worst part. The eyes turning away were like a knife to her heart. She began to stay away from school, from the park, even from the bodega, wrapping the images that came to her around her um, waking moments as one wraps a cape around the shoulders of a, on a cold day. Uh, lots of beautiful similes on this page and lots of beautiful imagery. Hope you're paying attention. There was the image of her father sitting at the table across from her, her body framed by the high kitchen window. 
his cap on the back of the chair near his shoulder. Dying is not the bad part, he had said. The bad part is when the death grows in us, when we know it's coming. Then you mourn for yourself even before you go. It's the knowing that is terrible. When I die, I want to die by getting hit by a comet at Yankee Stadium during the World Series. Why Yankee Stadium, her mother had asked. I don't want to die alone either, he, he had said, but um, buttering his toast. Perhaps it would have ended with Angela and her mother pressing themselves like two funeral lilacs between the yellow walls of their apartment. Had not Mr. Morales also told Consuela Ortiz that Angela had the power to see death coming. Consuela Ortiz was a woman of 47 who lived in the project. She was older than her years and much given to ruminating about her health. Further, she had had a strange feeling in her right side ever since a man had pushed her into the railing as they scrambled for seats on the IRT line. The more she thought of it, the more she thought that it might, after all, be cancer. And so she asked Mrs. Morales if she would arrange a meeting between herself and the girl, Angela. Mr. Rodriguez wanted nothing to do with it when Mrs. Morales approached him, but Jorge Cruz said that it would be a good idea. If she can't do this thing, Jorge Cruz said, gently tapping his curved, and yellow fingernails on the card table Mr. Rodri in Mr. Rodriguez's bodega, then we'll know that the death just happened and everybody will feel better for it. If she can, then we will know that it is a miracle of God. This tape is going to end soon. Um, I will read as much as I can. Please make sure you... Take your notes, um, add to your organizer, and finish the story on your own. Mrs. Morales was not sure of the um, if the miracles would be of God or Satan, but she had held her tongue while Mr. Rodriguez thought about it. I'll see what I can do about it, Mr. Rodriguez said. The idea didn't sit well with him. But neither did the notion that the girl was so sad now. So he spoke first to the mother, telling her just how he felt. And then with her permission, he spoke to them both and convinced them of um, Jorge Cruz's logic. Still, when they all found themselves in the bodega the following Saturday evening, they were not easy. Jamie Farrell, who sometimes delivered packages for Mr. Rodriguez, was there as were Maria Pinckney, Mrs. Morales, and a few other choice friends to whom she owed favors. My name is Consuela Ortiz, the woman had. The woman's hands were shaking as she spoke. I have a pain here. She touched her side, somewhat embarrassed to be revealing herself before so many people. Then she paused, not knowing what to say next or how to frame the question that she wanted answered. I don't know what to say to you, Angela said. I don't know about your pain. There were tears in Angela's eyes and her mother took her hand. Do you have dreams? Mrs. Morales asked. Dreams? Angela looked up at Mrs. Morales. I don't mean about me, Mrs. Morales said quickly. I mean about her. There were images in Angela's mind, images of a city of people walking working some sitting in the sun on beaches where they were eating lunches were they eating lunch i dreamt there was a noise an explosion it was on a nice day there were images in her mind <clears throat> a cloud that shaped itself into a funnel taking you to the beginning of page 50 a long way through the story so take your notes and now continue reading on your own and i will see you back in room 103